In this tutorial, we're going to show you how you can create the model of the lioness that you can see on the screen here. We're going to start with some vectors that have been edited from some clip art kindly supplied to us from the website www.vectorart.com. Now the vectors have been edited and prepared for modeling and we're going to focus on the modeling tools in this session. We'll work through using the create shape function to make the basic shapes for the lioness and then we're going to finish off using the smoothing and the very powerful sculpting tools that are available in the software. So let's go to file, close, and then we'll go and open an existing file. So from the project folder, we're going to open the lioness vectors.crv 3D file, press open. And so here you can see that we have a set of vectors that we edited using the drawing tools and the software. Now we're going to focus this session purely on modeling shapes from the vectors to build up a 3D relief model. If you want to learn more about drawing vectors, then please refer to the many drawing tutorials that we have available. So to stay organised during the modelling process, the artwork that we have here has been organised onto layers. So if we go to our layers bar, you'll see that we have five different layers and they each represent a different area of the lioness. If we just switch off the visibility of the head layer, you'll see that we've lost the vectors that represent the head. I'm going to switch off the front leg, the body, the back leg, and we're just going to leave the tail layer switched on. So we've got that light bulb on there. We're also going to click on the word tail to make that the active layer. And then we can look at starting uh, by creating the component for the tail itself. And so to create components, we need to access the modeling tools and they can be found in the modeling tab. So all of the 2D data is organised onto layers. I'm going to help myself by starting to organise my component tree. So we're going to right click on the word level 1. We're going to rename that level and we're going to call this level tail as that's the component that I'd like to create now. Okay, and then what we can do is we can look at tiling our windows so that we have the 2D view on the left and we have our 3D view on the right hand side. Okay, so all of the shapes that we're going to create in this session, we're going to look at using the Create Shape tool. Okay, so it's the first icon within your modeling tools list. If you click on that, that will open up the Create Shape form. And this tool basically enables us to specify simple profiles along with a variety of ways to control the shape that we want to create within the region of a closed vector that you have selected. So to start, we'll go ahead and select the tail vector. And so as we're working with natural forms, we're going to look at applying a curved profile. Okay, we've got an angle here of 90 degrees. We've got a final height set to no limit. Let's just press apply just to see how this looks. Okay, so you can see it is very bulbous there. So I may need to look at uh, controlling some of the height settings in here just to uh, reduce that down, uh, make it a little bit more subtle. So here we could look at using the slider on the angle just to reduce that, maybe down to 80. We could also look at a scale in this to an exact height. So at 0 0.06, we can see that is very flat there. So we may want to look at increasing this. So we could use the slider. Uh, and as we move that slider, we're getting instant feedback here in the 3D view. Uh, or we could type in a precise value. So let's try 0.2, press spacebar to enter that in and we can see uh, the result of that there. Okay, so I'm happy uh, with the fullness of the shape that we've got there. I like the definition and I like the height. Uh, so what we'd do then is we'd simply give this component a name. So we're going to call this one tail and then we simply press apply to accept those settings and then we can close out of the create shape form. So now we can see we've got a tail component within the tail level of our component tree. We have a grayscale representation of our component in the 2D view and we have the actual 3D component there in the 3D view. So now we're ready to move on to the next part. So if we go to our layers bar at the top, we're going to switch off the visibility of the tail layer. 
And you'll see that it's switched off the grayscale, but I can still see the component here in the 3D view. And that's because everything that we see in the 3D view is managed by the properties of our component tree. And the 2D grayscales is managed by the properties of our layers. Right then, so we're going to switch on the visibility of the back leg and we're going to click on the back leg to make that the active layer. And we can click into the white space. Now, as we're working with a new part of the Lioness, I'm going to look at organising the component tree by introducing a new level that would represent everything for the back leg. So to do that, we right click on the tail level and use the option here to insert a new level. Right click on level one and we're going to rename that level and we're going to call this level the back leg. And we can take our vector, the outermost back leg vector, and we're just going to use this option here to zoom active view to selected objects. And so with that vector selected, let's go back into the create shape form. Okay, so the nice thing about the create shape form is it actually remembers the values that you used previously. And so if we wanted to, if we were happy with these settings, we could just simply press apply just to see how our part looks. Okay, so I'm actually quite happy with the height that we're reaching there. So you can put that in Z and then just simply give that a name. And we're just going to call this one back leg base. Uh, press apply and then we can just close out of the form. So as I said, I like the height that we've got there in the leg. However, where the two components overlap here, we can see that we have this rather displeasing bold on top. And this is all down to the combined modes that we've set within our component tree. So the way that our component tree is organized has a direct effect on the way that our composite model looks in the 3D view. Now the component tree works bottom to top and so we started with the tail level that houses the tail component. Now this level is set to add and so it's simply adding onto the modeling plane which is at zero. Then we introduce the back leg level which houses the back leg base component. Now this level is also set to add and so anything in this level is adding on top of the tail level and the component within that tail level. So to correct this we need to look at changing the combined mode of the back leg level so that it's merging or blending in to the tail level. So to do that we can simply right click on the level, go to the combine mode and use this option here to merge. You'll see now that it's actually blending in to the tail and that's the result that I wanted to see. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to look at adding in detail on top of the back leg component. But with our setup everything will still merge into the tail level. So let's select this vector here, shift and select this vector here and we'll go back into the create shape form. So let's just press apply to see how this looks with the settings that we used previously. So I'll just put that in Z. Okay, so it's not too bad, however I feel that the detail is a little bit bulbous so we could look at knocking the final height uh, down there. So if we're going to scale exact height, let's just change that to 0.15, press apply. Okay, so I like that much better, it's much more subtle. Okay, so let's give that a name and we're just going to call this one back leg detail and then we'll simply press apply and then we'll close out of the create shape tool. Okay, so we can see that we have the detail of the back leg and that is sat on top of the back leg base. So that's adding on top there to create the definition. And then the two back leg components are sat within a level that is actually merging with the tail level. So we're getting a nice uh, merge between the two areas of this composite model. 
Okay, so if we just click into the 2D view, use this option here to zoom active view to the drawing limits. And now we'll look at moving on to the next section of the lioness. So into the layer bar at the top, we're going to switch off the visibility of the back leg layer, switch on the visibility of the body layer, make that the active layer by clicking on that, so that the word body goes bold, and you can click into the white space. So as we're working with a new part of our design, we're going to go into the component tree, right click on the back leg level, and we're going to insert a new level. Right click on level one, rename that level, and we're going to call this one body. We're also at this stage going to right click on that level and alter the combine mode to merge so that it blends in with our back leg level. Okay, so we'll start by selecting this vector here. So we're going to work with the uh, base of the body to begin with. Then we'll go into the create shape form. So as we've done before, let's just uh, take a look at our settings. So we're working with a curve profile around 80 degrees, scaling to an exact height of 0.15. So let's just press apply to see how that looks. Okay, it's not too bad. I could add a bit more height in there. So let's try 0.2 space to enter that in and see the result of that. Okay, so it's a bit more fullness in there. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so we could give that a name and we're just going to call this one body base. And then as I'm happy to move on to the next component, we're going to press apply and then use this option here to start a new component. And I'm going to select this vector here and then we could go and look at the same settings, press apply to see how that uh, interacts with what we've got here. Uh, and here again, it's a little bit bulbous on the uh, detail area here on the front. So you might want to knock that down to say 0.15, maybe make that a bit more precise by typing that value in. Okay, so that's not bad. Like what we've got there, got some detail and it's, we can see that now as a whole model it's really starting to come through. So we'll give that a name and we're just going to call this one body detail and then simply hit apply and then we can close out. Okay so again looking at the component tree we've got our body detail adding on top of the body base component. And again, these two components are sat within a level that is merging with the rest of the composite model. And so we're getting a nice blend between the body, the back leg and the tail. So now let's go back up to our layers bar, switch off the body layer, switch on the front leg layer, make it the active layer. Into the component tree, right click on the body level. We're going to insert a new level rename that level and we're going to call this one the front leg. Okay, we're also going to set the combine mode of that to merge so that everything that we create within this level blends in with our current composite model. So let's start by selecting the outer leg vector, go back into the create shape form. Uh, so again, we're going to work with a curved profile Again, we'll keep that to around 80 degrees uh, and then we'll just hit apply just to see how that looks. Okay, so it's a little bit flat so we can look at increasing the height there. Let's try 0.2 space to enter that in. Okay, so it's a bit more fullness in there. So I like what we've got. So we'll give that a name and we're just going to call this one front leg base. And then we can press apply. And now we're ready to start a new component, so the detailing of the leg, so we'll start a new component there. So I'll select this vector, shift and select this vector and this vector here. And again, curved profile, uh, this 80 degrees. Uh, we'll just go ahead, press apply to see how it looks. Okay, so that's far uh, too bulbous there. So we really need to just reduce the height there. So let's try point one five space into that in still a little too much so now we can maybe like look at the slider just to bring that down um, until we're happy with um, the actual outcome here okay so that's not too bad what we've got there so it's just over point one um, and then we can just give that a name so we're just going to call this one front leg detail and then press apply and then we can close out 
Okay, so now we can close out the front leg layer and then we can switch on the visibility of the head layer, make that the active layer. And again, in the component tree, let's create a level for the head. So right click on the front leg level, insert a new level, right click, rename the level, we'll call this one head. And then we'll right click on the head level and alter the combine mode so it's merging with the rest of the levels that we've got there in our component tree. Okay, so we're going to take the outer vector for our head and we'll go into the create shape form. So with the same settings that we used previously, let's just press apply to see how that looks. Okay, so it's fairly shallow, so we could look at increasing the height here. So maybe we'll just look at increasing that to 0.2, press apply. Okay, so that's okay. Give that a name and we're just going to call this one head base. Uh, apply that and then we could go ahead and start a new component in which case we're going to select the vector here that represents the details on the head uh, and again we're just going to go ahead and we're going to look at a uh, curve profile 80 degrees uh, maybe we'll just decrease that we know it's probably going to be too bulbous there so we'll try 0.15 Okay, that's still a far too much uh, shape in there, so we'll look at decreasing that. Let's try 0.1 space to enter that in. Um, and again, we, there's still a lot of um, bulbous areas in there, so we need to look at reducing that down. So I'm just going to look at using the slider. Okay, so actually at the 0.06, that seems to have done the trick there. So it's got uh, all the detail in, uh, however, it's, it's kind of shallow as well. Okay, so we'll give that a name and we'll just call that one head detail. And then we'll press apply and then we can close out of the create shape tool. So now we can see we've got a set of shapes uh, that have been created based on the vectors that we use. If we maximize our 3D view, we can see our basic shape of the lioness. We've got all of our components organized into their different levels, as well as the grayscales organized onto their different layers. So it's easier for me to access uh, each different element of the lioness. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to make a few minor adjustments uh, to the back leg and the front leg of our lioness just to really uh, complete the basic shape of our part here. And we're going to look at making the back leg and the front leg a little bit more prominent, uh, just so it's sticking out a little bit more in front of our main body shape. And so to do that, we can look at applying a tilt to both the back leg and the front leg. And the tilt just basically means that we're just adding in an angled base height. So it's just lifting up one area of that component. So in the case of the back leg, I only want to lift up this top portion here. In the case of the front leg, again, just this top portion here. And I can do all of this here in the 3D view. So to do that, uh, what I can do is I can select the component that I'd like to edit. Now I can select that from the component tree, or I could do it directly here in the 3D view. If I right click on the area that I want to select, you'll see that I'm displayed the option to select the back leg detail component or the back leg base component. In this case, this is the component that I'd like to adjust, the back leg base. And if I select that, you'll see it's now highlighted. And if I select that again, you'll see that we're in a state of transformation. So now I can make edits to that component, uh, whether that be to the actual shape of the part by using the control handles. I could rotate it if I wanted to, but I don't want to do any of that. I'm focused on the actual properties of the height of our component. And so to access that information, I just go to this blue square at the bottom here and if I click on that that will open up the mini component properties form. 
So to apply a tilt, I simply need to select the tilt option there and then use the set option to apply our anchor point. So the first anchor point is going to be your pivot point. As I said, I want that lifting from this area here with the tilt going up in this direction. So I'm going to click on that for my first point. You'll see I've now got number two next to the anchor. So I need to specify my second anchor point, which is going to be over here. So going up in this direction here and then I can just simply look at setting the angle okay so here we could go up just to move that up across and um, we could go up to say 5.8 we just move this form over to the left and then in the 3d view you can take a look so you can see we have far too much height in there so now we could look at decreasing this say to 2.8 again still got quite a bit of a vertical wall going on there so we'll just reduce that down and again it's still a little bit too high there so we're just going to look at dropping that down a little bit more let's try 1.2 Okay, so that's not too bad. Let's just put that in Z to take a look. Okay, so as you can see, we've lifted it at the top there, but we haven't caused too much um, vertical height in there either. So I'm happy with that one. So now what we can do is we can move over to the right leg. So if we right click on the right leg here, and we're going to use the front leg base component. Okay, so you can see we're already in um, the transformation mode. We've already got our properties form open, so it's just pulling up the details uh, for this component. And then we'll check the tilt option there, set our first anchor points at the bottom here, and then at the top there, and then again we'll look at using the slider just to increase that. Um, okay, so at one degree, let's just take a look. Okay, so it's not too bad, that's actually okay. So I'll leave that um, as it is there, and then we can just close out. We'll just put that back in the Z view there. And so you could continue to edit shapes at this stage if you needed to. Now in this case we can actually move on. Now say that you have a copy of this project in this state, we're actually going to save this file. So let's just go to File, Save As, and in the Project folder we're going to call this one Lioness Basic Model 3D Modeling. Press Save and you can access that from the Project folder. So now we're going to look at finishing the lioness, looking at the smoothing and the sculpting tools. Now, if you wanted to, you could load this basic file into the software to follow along. Now, this is an important transitional stage because we're going to go from being able to work with individual components, select them, edit them like we just did, to needing to join the components together so that they act as a single object. That will allow me to work with them much more organically. And so to do this, we're going to look at creating a brand new component based on everything that we can see here in the 3D view. That way, I'll still have access to all of the original parts that we built up to make the model that we can see here. So to do that and keep in our component tree organized, let's create a new level. So we'll right click on the head level, insert a new level. I'm going to rename that level by right clicking on the level one. Use the option here to rename the level and we're going to call this level the combined model. And then we're going to go into the modeling tools and we're going to use this option here to create a component from visible model. Now the combined model level is the active level. We can see that because it's bold. So when I click on this, this component will be added in to that level. You can see it's called copy of visible model, so let's just right click and we'll just rename that and we're just going to call this one lion to edit. Okay, and then what we can do is we could just show only this component. So let's right click on that component, go to show and put show only this. So that will undraw the visibility of all of the different levels we've got here. And you'll see that we just have one solid component that was a representation of all individual parts, all the components within the levels that form this composite model. So now I want to apply a general smooth over the entire lioness just to blend out some of the sharp edges that we have in the model.
And then we're going to go in with the sculpting tools and be much more specific about our edits. So with our line to edit component selected, let's go over into the smooth filter. Okay, so in here, we're now in a state where we can smooth our component. So by default, your smooth settings will be at zero, so at the very left side of your slider, and you can simply use this slider just to apply the smoothness. So when you let go of the slider, it will apply that smooth in the 3D view. So you can see at that setting, that's far too much. We've lost a lot of detail here. So we're just going to back that off quite dramatically. So maybe we'll look at somewhere around 25%. Okay, so that's softened some of the sharp areas at the top over here and here, but we're still uh, managing to retain all of that detail there. It's also worth noting that I do have Preserve Transparency switched on. And the reason that I have that on is so that when I apply this smooth over, I don't want the model to actually blend into the model in plane. We want to keep it all contained within the actual component. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So we'll just go ahead and bake the current smooth in and then we'll go ahead and then we'll just press OK and close out of the smooth components form. So now we're ready to finish the lioness off using the sculpting tools. So to do that, you need to select the component that you wish to sculpt. So we've got the lion to edit here and then you're going to go to the top row of your model and tools and it's this icon here, sculpt visible model. And then that will put your component into sculpt mode. Okay, so here we are in the sculpting form. So we have five options uh, in different ways in how we can interact with the model. We have an option here to adjust to the view. We've got three sliders here. Okay, so one's to adjust the diameter, the strength and the smoothness on whatever tool that we have selected. Then we have the option here to preserve the transparency of the model. So this is the same as what I mentioned earlier in the smooth tool. So with this checked, we're only applying changes to the model itself. And with this option unchecked, we can actually blend the model into the model in plane. Then we have the option to show the grayscale background and this is useful if you want to see other components in your job that aren't currently a part of your sculpting session. So these components will be greyed out here in the 3D view to give you an indication of where they are. Then we have the sculpt mode. So in this example, we're just going to use normal, which will allow the brush to average the high and low points as I drag the brush along the model. Then here we have the option to apply an overlay image. So if I had modeled the lioness from an image where I trace the vectors around the image and then create the components from those vectors, at this stage in the sculpt mode, I could opt to switch on the bitmap and that would be overlaid onto my model, which makes it easy for me to sculpt my model whilst looking at the image directly on top of the component. Now, as I don't have a bitmap, this option is greyed out. And then finally, at the bottom here, we have the option to add in a preset, which allows me to save brush settings. And we'll come back to this later. So we'll begin by looking at the smooth tool. Okay, so if I drag my cursor into the 3D view, you'll see that I'm presented with a crosshair and a circle. Now that circle represents the diameter of my brush or the tool that I'm using. And we can look at increasing that by using the slider of the mouse. And we can look at also adjusting the strength of our tool. So if we wanted to be more aggressive with how much we smooth, we'd go over to the right hand side. Uh, to be a little bit uh, light footed, you'd go over to the left. So we're just going to adjust this only ever slightly to around 40. Okay, and so all I do is I simply take my cursor and I just uh, click with the left mouse key on the area that I wish to smooth together. Now at the moment you can see that there are no changes and that's because I'm not currently 
activating the smooth tool I'm not pressing down with my left mouse key and so to actually apply some changes or to activate the smooth tool we must press down on the left key so when I press down you'll see that my brush circle is red that's telling me that it's currently switched on and if I take my cursor over into the model it will begin to apply uh, the smooth transition at the settings that I've applied in the form and you just go back and forth blend in the areas together until you're happy. So you need to understand that sculpting will only have an effect when clicking the mouse and moving it. And with the smooth tool you can think of this action kind of being similar to sandpaper. Now if you wanted to stay in the 3D view and you wanted to change your tools or settings rather than come into the form you can actually make use of the shortcut keys. Now if we take a look at the six tools that we have at the top here, you'll see that there is a number beside each one of those and that number represents the keyboard shortcut key to change to that specific mode. For example, if I go into the 3D view and now if I press the number 2 on the keyboard, you'll see that we've now changed into smudge mode. 3 allows me to deposit material, four allows me to remove material, five enables me to put my brush into undo mode and six enables me to twiddle my view. So let's press one on the keyboard to put us back into the smooth tool. Now we have ways to control the diameter and the strength using the arrow keys on your keyboard. So left arrow key will decrease the diameter of your brush the right arrow key will increase the diameter of your brush. The down arrow key will decrease your strength and the up arrow key will increase your strength. So not only am I able to control the diameter and the strength using the arrow keys on the keyboard, but if I had a scroller on the mouse, I can also control the diameter and strength using that. For example, if I scroll away from me you'll see that the diameter is increasing if I scroll towards myself then you'll see that the diameter is decreasing if I hold down shift and then scroll away my strength increases holding down shift and scrolling towards myself the strength is decreasing and so there's lots of ways to control the use of the tools whilst remaining in the 3d view so we're going to look at blending the edges of the model um, using the smooth tool. So I'm going to use the left arrow key to look at decreasing my strength. So we're going to go down just to around 70. That's a kind of a good diameter to work with there. I'm also going to decrease the strength to around 40. All I'm going to do is just go around edge of the model and you can see that where we're blending in uh, the detail on top of the base shapes. Okay, now I just don't want to go into the internal uh, detail too much. Okay, so we're going to look at using a different tool for that. So we don't want to take away too much um, of the shape there. Okay, just go around and the bottom and over down onto uh, the front leg. And all I'm doing is just going back and forth with my left mouse key held down and you can see that we're just making those changes. We've got these nice uh, transitions there, it's a nice smooth shape. Just go around the edge of the lioness's head, go around the top, soften that shoulder there and over onto the main body. You can see that we're just really blending everything uh, in together. So we can see that those settings have really worked well to soften all of the edges of the model. So at this stage I think it would be wise for me to save out these brush settings for the smooth tool as a preset and we can look at using that preset at a later date and I know that these settings will apply the same effects on similar models whether that be on this model or in a similar modeling session.
So to do that, you can see we've got add new preset already selected. So we just use the add option here and we just give this uh, brush setting a name. In this case, I'm just going to call this one edge finish. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and press OK and you'll see that it's now been added um, as a preset. And so this will remain here when I open new sessions of the software. The only time that we can remove this is just by manually using the remove option. So the nice thing about this is if I was working on, let's say, a dog and I wanted to apply uh, the same smooth across the edge of that dog, I'd come into my presets, select smooth and it will remember the settings that we've got here and I can just go ahead and go and apply that edge finish. Okay, so going back in, we're just going to look at blending in uh, the body detail with the base of the actual body itself and then we'll look at blending in the back leg in with the body. Now for areas like this we may want to look at increasing our diameter, maybe increasing the strength as well just to create a better blend between the two. Uh, so to do that I'm going to use the right arrow key to increase my diameter. I'm also going to use the up arrow key just to increase the strength. And again I'm just going to go back and forth to just blend the two areas together. Okay, we'll just keep going over that. And we'll come over here, then we'll look at bringing the shoulder back and forth into the body shape, like so. And we'll take this part and just go back and forth. Now sculpting is something that you really get a feel for and it requires quite a lot of practice to become pretty proficient with it. Now in this case I am actually using a mouse to sculpt the lioness but if you are really serious about sculpting then I'd highly recommend using a pen and tablet as this gives you much more control over your wrist when manipulating the material whilst in the sculpt mode. Next up, we're going to look at using the smudge tool. Okay, so the smudge tool enables us to drag material from high areas to low and low into high. And the way that I kind of find the smudge tool is like working with virtual clay. We can push it and we can pull it back. And so that's good for creating detailed areas. So let's have a look at the tail. Now I want to zoom in on the tail, so the safest way for me to do this would be to go into the twiddle mode and then if I press both of my mouse keys down I'm able to pan my view and then I can use the scroller of my mouse to zoom in and then we can just put that in place like so. Okay, so let's go into the smudge mode. Okay, so here we need to alter our diameter and strength and so it'd be easy for me to see the diameter here in the 3D view. So I'm going to look at using the arrow keys. I'm going to use the left arrow key to decrease my diameter. Okay, so somewhere around 30, that seems reasonable. Uh, and then with the strength, I think I'm going to look at increasing the strength to around 50. Okay, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so the idea here is I'm going to click and I'm going to drag material from low areas into the high areas to create a kind of a crease. I want to create a, a fur in the tail. So I'm going to click, so you can see it's activated now, and I'm just going to drag that out. So you can see how it's worked, we're just pushing it. Again, it's kind of like virtual clay, we're just pushing that material in. And again, we're just going to click and drag it out like so and over here we're going to click and drag that out then we can drag from high areas into low areas so we'll take that middle part and we're just going to drag that back and drag this back over here again push that out push it back in and we're just going back and forth until you're happy with the results that you see in there 
And then if you wanted to, you could even look at uh, going back over uh, areas with the smooth tool. So we could go into the smooth and um, with those settings, they seem OK. We could just look at softening that top area there. And then you just tweak and change and um, use the different tools until you're happy with the way that it looks. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this back again, pushing that out and again, pull that out again. Okay, so let's just use this option up here to zoom to fit. So now we're going to look at applying the same effect on the paws of the legs of the lioness. So let's just go into the twiddle view, we're going to hold down both mouse keys to pan the view, use a scroll of my mouse to zoom in and then pan across, go back into the smudge tool and again we're just going to cut in to those areas of the paws there just to get all the individual parts out and just make it more paw like. Okay, so just going to bring that down, drop that over there, bring that around push it up and drop it down. So just going up and down, merging the low areas into the high areas and the high areas into the low areas until you have something that you like the look of. And you can do as little or as much sculpting as you want to. It's a very subjective matter and it's all dependent on how you like the look of the part. Okay, I'm going to use the smooth tool here and I'm just going to soften the edge over there and just over here and I think I'm happy with what we've got there. So we'll just go over here and use this option to zoom active view to the drawing limits and then we'll go into the twiddle view and again we'll just pan across over to the right paw zoom in there and then we'll go back into the smudge tool and we're just going to cut in there like so and then pull it back down again cut in the low to the high areas and then pull that back down again just to create that pore effect okay push it in then pull it back down again I'm just pulling that material down. I'm going to try and round this top part off a little bit. Bring that back down over here. Push that out over to the right and then bring that down over to the left just to curve that off. And like I said before, it's very much a process of just going back and forth until it looks reasonable um, and until you're basically happy with it. Okay, I might use the smooth tool here and just go over the areas there and bring that down. Okay, so I think I like what I've got there. I might just bring that smudge back into play. Just pull that down, bring that across like so. We cut that, cut more into that area there and bring that down again just to give that a little bit more definition and then use the smooth tool just to finish that off at the top. Okay, so a lot of what we've got, so we'll use that option there, zoom, active view to the drawing limits. Now whilst you are in sculpt mode and you've made lots of changes that you're happy with, it is good practice to hit the keep button. So the keep will just temporarily save your model whilst we're in sculpt mode. And then any changes that you make afterwards that you then didn't like, you can revert back uh, to the last kept change. So if we use the keep option here, and then if I go to the remove tool, let's just increase the strength there and let's just make some drastic changes to the model so you can see I've uh, removed lots of material from our lioness. I don't like that. I can use the discard option and a warning will come up and it will tell me, do you really want to discard all your changes since you started sculpting or performed the last keep changes? Now, you'll remember we actually press keep.
So we're going to press yes and it's just going to get rid of the changes we made there but you'll see that it's kept all of the changes we made up until the point that we pressed keep. So now we're going to look at using the smudge tool to blend the legs into the body. So the back leg here and the shoulder into the body over here. So go back into the smudge tool. Let's just increase our diameter. Okay, let's just make that quite big. So we're going to work with much larger surface area here. So somewhere around uh, 200 is okay. And then the strength, we're just going to really drop that strength somewhere around 30. Uh, and then we're just going to just pull the material up into the body. Okay, so I'm just going and pulling that up. And then dragging that back down so I'm just going back and forth like so and then bring that in and going left to right we can see that we're just getting a nice blend in there we'll just go back and forth and so having the larger surface area uh, with a small strength just means that we're making subtle changes so we'll come back over on the shoulder here so again go over to the left and then pull that back in over to the right Again, back over to the left there, come over onto this area here, back into that crease, and then pull it back out. I'm just going back and forth until I'm happy with uh, the overall model um, and just blending parts together. Okay, so I think I'm happy with that. I'll just pull this shoulder up a little bit and then pull that into the back like so. And then once you're happy, you can finish and then maybe look at accepting those changes. So I think I'm happy with what we've got there. So I'm going to use the keep option here. And then we're going to look at the head area. So let's go into the twiddle view. We're going to use both the mouse keys to pan our view, zoom in onto the head so that's our main focus. And then we're going to look at uh, basically sculpting the head so it's more lioness-like. So to start with, I can see we have a lot of creases here and that's all down to the fact that the vector that we used to create this shape had lots of uh, sharp corners and that's why we're seeing this creasing effect. So we're going to look at just smudging those creases out to start with. So let's go into the smudge tool. So we're going to start by decreasing our diameter to something that's more reasonable for the area that we're working with. Okay, so 55 seems to be okay. Strength, we'll just increase that to around just above 30. And then we're just going to go in there and just basically smudge out all of those creases. Okay, so you can see that we've got rid of quite a few of those already. And that's again, that's all down to uh, the vector that we use to uh, create the shape uh, from. Okay, so I think we've sm smooth smudged out all of the creases there. So now we could look at working on the jawline and the nose area over here. And so to do this, we're going to look at dragging material out to form the jawline. Okay, so here we're just going to decrease our diameter. So we're going to make that somewhere around, okay, so 37 seems reasonable there. Um, and then in terms of our strength, we'll just increase that ever slightly just to the low 40s. And we're just going to pull the material down just to create that jaw. Okay, so you can see that jaw is coming through there nice and strong like so. And all I'm doing is just pulling material out and down. Okay, like that. But then what we could do is we could look at just pulling that material back just to pull it back in and then pull it back out again. Then we could look at increasing our diameter. So we're going to look at increasing it because we're going to look at the nose area, the snout area over here. So I'll increase that to around 60 and we're just going to look at pulling that out. Okay, so pulling that out like so. And we'll also look at bringing that jaw 
back in ever so slightly so little movements here just going back and forth uh, to make those changes I'm going to pull that snout down a little and we're just going to pull this area down just to bring that in ever so slightly okay and then over the right hand side the nose area you can just push that in pull that down and then push that back just to create uh, the nose effect and then pull that back down again and you can see that what we've got here uh, is looking much better we can see the nose we've got a nice strong jaw there uh, we've got a nice snout area as well and all I'm doing is just going back and forth uh, making tweaks and changes and as I've said before in this tutorial it is a very much an iterative process as this is such um, a subjective concept so moving on, we're going to look at the eye, okay? So first off, we're just going to look at decreasing uh, diameter, decrease the strength a little. We're just going to push this material in over here. And so the idea is we're actually creating uh, this kind of brow, okay? And I'm just going to pull that material over, pull that over there bring the cheek in so you've got a nice strong uh, cheek line there just soften the edge there again I'll come back to the brow area pull that over okay so I'm happy with what we've got there so now we could look uh, at the eye itself so to do the eye we're going to look at using the deposit tool Okay, so that's uh, number three, which is this one here. Uh, so I'm just going to put my cursor around the area where I'd like to place my eye. And then I'm going to use the left arrow key just to reduce uh, the diameter of the brush. Okay, so it's a little bit too small, so we're just going to increase that. Okay, somewhere around 30 seems reasonable. Uh, strength uh, should be okay and uh, if we just click and I'm just going to click in place until that eye appears and you can see uh, that there so I like what we've got there I might want to just uh, increase that a little bit more now if you felt that you did too much we can use control and Z just to undo what we've done there okay so you can see it'll just go back to each individual um, change that you made Right, so I like the eye there, I like the brow, I like what we've got here with the nose and the jawline. Now we're going to look at the ear. So for the ear, we're actually going to use the remove tool just to hollow out uh, a general ear shape. Okay, so we're going to go with a diameter, uh, it's a little bit bigger than this maybe, let's just increase that. Okay, so around 40 is okay. Uh, the strength, uh, around 30 should be fine. Um, we're just simply going to just draw in a shape that looks like this, and then we'll just draw in a little shape like that there. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll look at using the smudge tools uh, to just basically manipulate the shape there. So into the smudge tool uh, diameter, okay, so what we've got here seems okay. And so we're just going to go in there and just really kind of manipulate uh, the shape that we've got. Okay, so just pushing that back and forth uh, just to create kind of more of a realistic looking uh, lioness ear okay so you just keep working at that until uh, you're happy with what you've got there okay so that's not too bad if I wanted to I could use a smooth tool just to soften uh, the edges uh, of our ear that we've got uh, and then go back into the smudge tool maybe look at reducing the diameter and just pushing this up okay it might have been a little bit too much so I'm going to press control Z control Z control Z until those changes have been made okay so I'm just going to look at blending this area into the top like this 
bring that back down, move that across, over to the left. Okay, so I think I'm happy with what we've got there. I might just want to round it off a little, like so, and just maybe push this in a little bit more. Maybe undo that using the Control Z option, uh, and then just reduce the strength, maybe increase the diameter, and just push this area uh, back and forth in and out of the ear and the actual uh, head there. Okay, so I'm just going to go into the smooth tool. Uh, again, with the low strength, I'm just going to just softly blend uh, this part of the head into the neck area. Um, and then over here, I'm just going to come over on the arm and just bring a uh, smooth over on there and just work in the middle of these areas over here as well, just to give it a light uh, soften there. And then we'll go into the twiddle tool uh, just to pan our view and then go back into the smooth tool again, just soften those internal areas, I'll just soften the nose a little bit um, and then we'll just go back into the twiddle view, pan our view across and just check, zoom out and just check the areas we've got here so back into the smooth and again just give that a little soften just in the middle of that internal detail there. Okay, once you're happy, you can press keep and then we can use this option here to zoom active view to the drawing limits. And so I could continue working at the lioness and as I've mentioned, it is a very iterative process and it's very, very subjective also. And it's just a case of continuing to sculpt until you're happy with your end result. Okay, so I like what we've got, so I'm gonna go ahead and press okay.